Today we are going to consider our question paper, which is uh, the one that we wrote in June. That is uh, for the June exams, June 2024, uh, paper one. So make sure that uh, when going through these revisions, uh, also read the instructions that you are given, go through the instructions. So especially there we are given uh, the special part of the decimal answers, which are not exact, uh, must be given or should be given to three significant figures unless stated otherwise. And also the omission of essential working, which is important working, must be actually presented in your uh, in your calculations. So that is the major part that we are going to consider. Make sure that you go through each and every part of the instruction uh, that you are given. So this was our paper one. Remember, we are not going to have any calculator, neither mathematical tables, nor slide rules, nor calculators may be used in this paper. So we are given uh, the first part of our question that was to simplify. That is number one, A, simplify. That's zero minus minus three. So we've got two things here, a minus, then a minus, which is on three. So remember, if these two signs meet a minus and a minus, that is going to be a positive. You are given a minus and a minus, same if you're given a positive and a positive. Let's say there is a positive value uh, that you are having on this part. A positive and a positive remains as a positive. So if the two signs are the same, they'll remain the same. They'll remain a positive, I mean. So that means this will be a positive. Negative, negative, it will be a positive. So that's zero plus three, uh, which is simply equivalent to, to three. So that was our first part of our question that express as a recurring decimal. That is the major part. Eight over three as a recurring decimal. So remember, we have got uh, decimals, types of decimals, a terminating decimal, which ends. And we have got a recurring decimal, which is the type of decimal that does not end. La like, for an example, we've got 1, 3, 3, and so on and so on. That's a recurring decimal, does not end. It's endless. It's going to be repeating, repeating, repeating values up, up, to, up to infinity, does not end. Repeating values. So let's see what we have got here. That is 8 over a 3. All right, 8, uh, that is, we're going to divide 8 divided by 3. What are we going to have? 3 into 8. That is, we've got 3, 6, 2 times. Okay. Then a remainder in 6, because we've got 3, 6. So meaning to say 8 minus the remainder, uh, mi minus 6, we're going to have the remainder of a 2. So there. We have got a remainder of a two. So let's divide three into six. And to, uh, I mean, 20, that will be a six into 18. So you're going to have that uh, repetition, guys. As you can see, if you subtract uh, 18 from 20, you are going to have a remainder of two. That means we're going to have two, zero, two, zero, and so on. So this is going to remain uh, like that throughout. A 20, we're going to have a six, a 20, again, a six, and so on, and so on. So as we can see, this decimal that we are having is not going to end. It is going to repeat itself, comma, six, six, and so on, and so on. So how can I present that uh, such a decimal? I can just present this as two, comma, six. Then I indicate with a dot to show that the six is repeating. This number here is repeating itself, and so on, and so on. So if you're given a condition, let's say it's 1,83, uh, let's say it's 83 like this. Then we have got another 83, another 83. Then you see that this 83, 83 is repeating. So you're going to have 1,83, then you put the dot on uh, the two dots on 83, the part that is repeating. So the six is repeating. So you're just gonna have uh, the dot there on six. All right. Find, so there we need to find the square root of this, the square root of 1 and 11 over 25. So just uh, uh, express this as an improper fraction. Uh, that is going to, remember, multiply, then add. So that was going to be 25 plus 11, which is 36. So we are going to have the square root of uh, 36 over 25. Remember, just as normal, evaluations even uh working with the sets 
we also do understand that we can separate uh, the square roots. When given the square root of a fraction, it can be the square root of a single term separated, meaning we can calculate or evaluate the square root of 36, the square root of 25 separately. So the square root of 36, that is going to be 6, uh, that of 25 is a 5. Remember, 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6, that is 36. So that is what you're having. So you can write it as plus or minus. Or you can just leave it like that. Um, that is going to be plus or minus 5 into 6. That is going to be 1. And we have got a remainder of 1 over 5. So that was what you are supposed to have done in the simplification. Uh, make sure that you do simplify uh, properly. Then number two, you're given simplify again. So this is a mixed fraction. Let's try have it as an improper fraction. That is two and two thirds divided by two. Remember two is a whole number. You can also write as two over one. Okay, so, but that is a two for now. So that is multiply and what are we going to have at the end? If you multiply this, then we add a two. That is six, three times two, which is a six plus a two, which is eight over three divided to this two. So like I said, this two is same as two over one. So remember that you're dividing. So what are you going to do? Introduce the multiplication sign. So the moment that you introduce the multiplication sign, you are inverting the second fraction. So in this case, we are going to interchange what we are having on the second fraction. So one is going to be on top, the two is going to be on the bottom, which is the denominator. Remember, under multiplication, we can reduce our values as long the relationship is between the numerator, the denominator. It can be the numerator to the denominator of another fraction. As long there is a relationship between the numerator and the denominator. So you can see between the two and the eight, there's a relationship we can reduce by two. That is a one by two, that is a four. So a remaining four times one, which is four over three times one, which is three. So that means we are going to obtain three into four. That is going to be one remainder one over three. So uh, that is, you can write it in simplest form. It will be one and one over three. So these are the typical questions, guys. As you can see, it's uh, quite uh, easier to work with these uh, typical questions. Just make sure you work with more revisions uh, that can help. So find the value of, which is our B. So we are given uh, this time, let us try and apply our board mass. Remember, board mass, guys, still exists. So yes, we can have those things like bomb dust, but still the board mass is existing. So we can apply the brackets of division that is a division. There is a division. These two values. So that means we are going to have 9 plus 6 divided by 3, which is a 2. Multiplication, we do not have addition. That is the one that we are having. So you can add 9 plus 2, which is 11. So that is your board mass. So make sure you divide properly, simplify properly what you are given. Evaluate C. That is 0, 0.032 divided by uh, 0, 0.4. So when working with the decimals division, I said it is best that you have the number that is in the denominator as a whole number. So you just have to check how many decimal places are we having? One decimal place. We only have one digit. So we are going to multiply by 10 over a 10. So multiplying by 10 on the numerator, we're just going to move one decimal, uh, well, that is one comma to the right. So it's going to be 0, 0,32. Everything over 0, 0,4 times 10. Remember the purpose of multiplying by 10 is for us to obtain the whole number. So we're remaining with a 4. So let's divide 4 into 0. That's a 0, comma. Uh, then you take note, this here is not 32. After a, the comma, that is the digits that you are, have, you are going to count, you are going to have this digit by, this is three, this is two. 
not 32. If you are given 10, comma, this is not 10, comma, 52, no, it's 10, comma, 52. 10, comma, 52. So you see, the way that you read also affects how you calculate this. If you understand this as 0, 0,32, you're going to be tempted to divide 4 into 32, which is wrong. But if you understand that this is 0, 0,32, 0, 0,32 digit by digit after the comma, before 10 as it is, this is not 1, 0, 0,52, no, it's 10, 0,52. So meaning to say, when dividing, you are going to divide 4 into 3, digit by digit. So 4 into 3, that's a 0. And we've got a remainder of a 3. So we're going to put this 3 on 2. That is 32 now. 4 into 32. You are now dividing 4 into 32, which is 8. So that was going to be uh, 0, 0,08 at the end. So this is how you can uh, evaluate your decimals. Remember, you are not having a calculator there. So you must be careful in the simplification. We are given three learners A, B, C contributed $20, $30, $50 respectively. They bought a packet of sweets with 150 sweets worth $100. Okay, this is the amount they are contributing. The total amount 20 plus 30 plus 50 it is $100. So as you can see, the $100, it corresponds to the total number of both. It is bought, this is bought from the total amount they are having. So this 150 sweets is the total number of sweets they bought. So the question was on A, write down the ratio of the money they contributed. The money they contributed 20, 30, 50. But you're given in an ascending order, in increasing order increasing already these values they are increasing order they're in increasing order 20 as to 30 as to 50 that's increasing so there's nothing to change there so this is your a as to b as to c so remember ratio you can reduce as you can that's a 20 there's a 10 here there's a 10 there's a 10 so you can reduce by 10 that will be 2 as to 3 as to 5 so that is our ratio in simplest form. So remember, that's our A, S to B, S to C. Nothing changed from what we're given. Then number B, if the three learners shared the sweets in the ratio of the money they contributed, if they shared this total, remember the number, the total number of sweets is 150 sweets. They shared, they bought 150 sweets. So they are saying if they are going to share these 150 sweets in the same ratio of the amount, in the ratio of the money they had, remember the ratio of the money we reduced to this, we are now having two as to three as to five. If they are going to share in this ratio, calculate the number of sweets. C got, that is what is going to be the number of sweets C got. So according to the ratio C, it's got a ratio of five. But what about the 150 that we are given? What is it? This is the total, as I said before, corresponding to the $100, which is the total amount. So this is the total number of suites they bought. So according to the ratio, we are going to need the total according to the ratio. That corresponds to the number of suites. So you add your ratios 2 plus 3 plus 5. So that's 5 plus 5, which is 10. So according to the ratio, our total is 10. This total ratio, which is 10, is the one that corresponds to the total number of suites that you are given, which is 150 suites. What about this part of C? Because C has got a 5 according to the ratio. C has got a 5. So what is going to be the number of suites? So as you can see, this is ratio. This side are the number of suites. So the ratio on its own, the number of suites on its own. So what is going to be the corresponding value in this case? So that is 5 over 10 times this 150. All right. So that will be less. So the lesser will be on top. Or you can just use the ratio concept. This one over this one. Multiply to the other term. You're going to have 
uh, the exact value of the ratio that you need. So that is simply five over 10 guys is simply a half. That is simply a half one over two. So that is half of uh, 150, which is 75. Half of, if you're saying one over, one over two times 150, that is half of 150, half of 150, which is what? Which is 75. So meaning to say, uh, C got uh, 75 uh, sweets in this case. That was the, the concept uh, of this question. We are working with uh, the ratio. So if it was B, you consider the part where B is. This is A, B, C. The part where B is, which is three. If it is A, A is three, is two. So you consider the letter that you're given and uh, the value. You can also work from that ratio before you reduced the ratio 20 as to 30 as to 50. Still, you're going to obtain the same answer. But the first part, the answer here was needed in the simplest form. That is why we had to reduce this one. But for the calculations thereafter, it does not matter. You are working with the, uh, the one that is in simplest, uh, simplest form or you're working with the one that you had before, which is before uh, simplifying, still one and the same thing. All right, then we are given on question number four, which is uh, very, very important for us to understand how this question is given. We are given here two hills, that is A and B, three kilometers apart. So there are two hills that we are given, and they are three kilometers apart. A is 150 meters above sea level. All right, let's just use the meters, the one that we are used to. So convert this. It's going to be times 1,000, which is 3,000 meters. So this is what is happening on this condition. We are given, uh, let's say this is where our A is, okay, above the sea level. So A is 150 meters above the sea level. But we are given that these two yields that we are given, which is A and B, they are actually 3,000 meters apart, which is three kilometers. So meaning to say, as you are moving to, to B, in this case, we, we, we do not know what's going to happen at B, but the distance in between these two hills is the three kilometers that we are given there which is the 3,000 meters. So the question is on this part, I mean, our major part, the person is the person on top of the hill, A, which is on, of the, this hill that you're given, A, is a person on top. So we've got a person on top of this hill, sees the peak of hill B. So take note, you're on top of A, then as you're on top of A, you are seeing the peak, which is the top of B. You cannot see that because this B is on top, above the peak of B. The angle of elevation, remember, you have to raise up, uh, from the ground level. This will be your ground level. So we cannot consider this way. No, you have to consider on top. So meaning to say B is actually above of A. In order for us to see what is on A, A or on B, B is on top with an angle of elevation. It's on top. C is the peak of B at an angle of elevation of 15 degrees. From this top here, we are seeing the top of B. So this is where our B, remember B and A both are grounded from the same, from the same ground level. Both they are grounded from the same ground level, but B is going to be on top of A like this. So B will be above A. This is the point where A is looking on top, is seeing the top of B. This is the condition. So this side, we are talking about the, the hill B. So that is our angle of elevation from consideration that we are given. Uh, which is the angle of elevation uh, to the top of this, to the top of B is 15 degrees. So that is the condition. So remember, this will be at 90 degrees. 
and that means also this will be at 90 degrees. So the question was, use as much information given below as is necessary. We are given the sign, the cost of the turn. Find the height of B above C level. Remember, A is 150 above C level. So meaning to say we are considering this as our C level. We are considering this as our C level. So B above C level, we are considering this is the height of B to the top there. So there are two things to consider. This part of uh, 150 meters, which is the same, because A is below B. So meaning to say the height of A is covered here because A, as it was looking on top of B, it was considered on its own ground level. So that means they will be at the same height from this point here up to this point. We are we at the same height of A. Then there's also another height taken from this point going up to the last point there at the top, which we do not know. You can consider X. So meaning to say the height above the sea level is considering to be the 150 and the X combined together up to this point. So we are considering the 150 and the X. So the question is, how can we calculate this X? Because already this part, we know this is uh, 150. So how can we calculate this X? So we can consider our trigonometrical ratios because this is a right angle triangle that you're given. That's why we are given uh, these ratios of sine, cos, tan is paper one, but you're given this because uh, they consider uh, the trigonometrical ratios. So let us consider according to 15 degrees, X is the opposite. And this side, remember the same side, if this is 3000, it means also from this point to this point is the same, which is 3000 meters. So according to what you're given, this is the opposite to 15. The 3000 is adjacent, this 15 degrees and 90 are adjacent to each other. So this is the adjacent side. So which ratio are we going to consider? Opposite and the adjacent at the same time from our Sokatoa concept. So we need the opposite and adjacent, which is on tan. So that is, let's substitute according to this ratio, the tan is opposite over adjacent. That is the tan of the angle. 15 degrees is equal to the opposite over that. So the opposite, that is our X, over the adjacent, which is 3,000 meters. So that means you can calculate X. This is same as over one. So cross multiply uh, one times X, that will be X is equal to 3,000 times 10, 15 degrees, that is 3,000 uh, tan 15 degrees. So this part, that is why we are given these values for tan cos because they do know that you do uh, not have a calculator. This is paper one. So you're going to use the value that you are given corresponding to tan 15 degrees. We have got its value corresponding direct. So that is going to be 3000 times uh, 0, 0,0875. All right. So make sure that you multiply properly. Uh, these are just zeros here. So you multiply by three, then you consider the zeros at the end. Our X uh, was going to be uh, something like 262,5 in meters. But remember, we are not uh, considering x is our answer in this case x is this distance here 262.5 meters so above this sea level the height of the hill b is going to be considered from as this one so we are covering up the 150 the 262.5 so in this case we are going to add uh, to this value uh, that is our answer was going to be 150 plus 262.5 
So if you add, guys, that is 150 plus 262,5. This is simply something like this. So that will be comma zero there. If you add, that will be five comma two. Add five here and six, that is 11. One, two, that will be four. All right, so meaning to say we are going to obtain 412,5 meters. If you, are to, if you are considering in uh, meters, that will be the uh, the height above the sea level. So you, you are supposed to be very careful on the simplification, uh, the way that you are given your uh, this, this presentation here. So you are given that if you are on top of A, you're supposed to see the peak of B. But this is supposed to be from the angle of elevation. So remember the angle of elevation, you consider the ground level. So at top of A, it will be acting as a ground level. Then as you are looking on top, meaning to say the 15 degrees is affecting to the top of B. So there are two distances considered, that one of the A, and this part that uh, is a uh, part of the elevation that you're given. So that is how you're supposed to attempt your typical question, as you can see. That is three marks. Let's see, question number five, you're given P, uh, Q, and R in this diagram are on the circumference of a circle, P, Q, and R. Then O is the center. And you're given P, O, R is 300 degrees, which is the reflex angle. And also are given these two angles, they are equal and they are equal to X. From this information that we are given, uh, the first question of uh, question five, it was find A, P, Q, R. All right, so you need to calculate angle P, Q, R, which is this angle here, P to Q to R, which is this one. We do understand that um, this angle that is uh, at the center, which is P or R, the one that is inside. Remember, we have got this reflex. Then we are going to have the acute P or R. This angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So do not be tempted with these 300 degrees. The 300 degrees, it affects this angle on this side. If you were to use the 300, this is supposed to be the angle that it affects at the circumference. But this one Q, it is affected by the other P or R, this one, the acute angle. So how do you calculate this acute angle P or R? So the acute angle uh, P or R in this case, uh, remember angles at a point add up to 360. So it's going to be 360 minus 300 degrees, which is uh, 60 degrees. So if this angle is 60 degrees, therefore we can determine our angle P, Q, R, because we do understand that angle at the center is twice this one at the circumference. So the angle at the circumference is going to be half of this one. If this is twice, Therefore, the one at the circumference is going to be half of that at the, at the center. So 60 divided by 2, that was going to be uh, 30 degrees. Okay, so that is the condition of our question we are given. So you must be careful. The presentation that you are having, the theorems that you are working with, uh, that is very, very important. So this was going to give us 30 degrees. Then we need also the value of X. Find X. Okay, X, if you have to consider, this here is a complete uh, quadrilateral that you're given. P, Q, from Q to R, from R to O, from O to P, we've got four sides that we consider and they're also four angles inside, that is one, two, three, four. There are four angles inside, and we know that a quadrilateral, the interior angles or these angles that are inside of a quadrilateral are supposed to add up to 360 degrees. 
So that means you are considering the angles that are inside, adding up to 360 degrees. You can actually form an equation. From that concept, you can form an equation. That means if I add this x to this x to this 300 degrees and to this three, uh, I mean 30 degrees, these interior angles of a quadrilateral that is formed do not con the shape that we are seeing there. It is a quadrilateral because we have got four angles inside four sides. So the sum must be equal to 360. So we have formed an equation where we can solve for x. x plus x, this is simply 2x, 1 plus 1. So that's 2x plus three, uh, 300 plus 30, which is 330 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. So 2x will be equal to 360 minus 330. If we transpose this to the other side, it will be a negative. So that is going to be uh, 30 degrees. Okay, so we can divide by two to determine uh, the value of x, which is going to be uh, 15 degrees. So that was uh, going to be the value of x, that is uh, 15, uh, 15 degrees. Number six, solve the simultaneous equations. So guys, we know that we have got uh, methods that we tend to work with, and they are best methods also to work with. There it was best to simply use the substitution method. If you were to check the first equation, x is already the subject. We are given there x is equal to 3 minus 3. x is the subject of the formula, so you can just substitute this uh, in place of x. So it was easier for us to apply the substitution method. I'm not saying any other method does not work. No, you can use any other method, but substitution was easy because as you can see, x here is the subject of the formula. So you can substitute uh, equation 1 into 2. That is in place of x. So in place of x, we are going to substitute. This will be uh, 2y is equal to in place of x. We are going to substitute what is representing x from equation 1, which is 3 minus 3y, three but there is a minus 8. So consider that also. So we have formed another equation with only one unknown value, which is y. So in this case, we can solve for y because we only have one unknown. So transpose uh, minus 3y to the other side of the equation becomes a positive. So 2 plus 3 was going to give us 5y is equal to 3 minus 8, which is minus 5. So divide by 5 both sides. That is you're obtaining uh, the value of y in this case, which is negative 1. So using the substitution concept, it was going to be easier because also if you consider that first equation, x is already the subject of the formula. We are already given that x is equal to 3 minus 3y. Three so having this value of y can simply substitute in place of y. In place of y, I'm going to substitute minus 1. So x will be equal to, remember that concept, negative, negative, that's a positive, so 3 plus 1, that will be a 4. So in this case, all right, sorry for that. We have got a 3 there. That's 3 times a negative 1. All right, that's 3 minus 3, y. So 3, then negative there, and a negative, which is going to be a positive. So at the end, uh, that, me that means our x is going to be a 6. All right, so you uh, can also substitute this, uh, these values uh, and see if uh, it does correspond from one equation. Uh, substitute the value of x and the value of y to prove uh, the values that you are given. It's up to you in the simplification. All right, number seven, you are given a rectangular wall. So there is a rectangular wall that we are supposed to consider. Measuring six meters by five meters. That's our rectangular wall. Here's a window measuring 1,5 by 
meaning to say a window is going to be like this inside. Like this is our window measuring 1,2 meters, uh, 1,5 by 1,2 meters. This is the window. So the question is, the wall needs to be painted. You need to paint the wall, not the window, but the wall. Calculate the area of the wall to be painted. Since there is a window here, we are going to remove that so that we remain with this section here. This is the section to be painted all this part. We are not going to, we are not going to consider this part only, but the rest of the section is going to be considered. So it's just like that part of uh, area of the unshaded region or area of shaded area of the wall shape, which is the, the rectangle minus the rectangle that is inside. So our area was simply going to be, remember area of a rectangle is length times width. So the bigger rectangle, six times five, minus that smaller angle measuring 1.5 uh, by 1.2. So that was gonna be our area six times five, which is 30 minus 1.5 uh, times 1.2, which was gonna be 1.8. So they must uh, multiply, that's 1.5 times 1.2, just, Ignore the comma in this case. Multiply properly 15 times 12, the way that you are used to. That's a zero. There you multiply one times five, which is five. One times one, which is one. Two times five, which is 10, but one here. Two times one, which is two plus one, which is three. Then you add, that's a zero here. A three, a one. Then you consider the decimal place is one, two. So this is one, two. So it's going to be 1,80. So 1,80 and 1,8 is the same. All right. So you subtract 30 minus 1,8. That was going to give us 28,2. So that's our area 28,2 uh, square meters. So the subtraction part 30 minus 1,8, so it must be 1,8, so that will be 30,0 like that. Okay, so that's a placeholder, so you're going to have 2, 1, and 1 here. So what are we going to have at the end? That will be 2, 10 minus uh, 2, which is 8, and that will be 2. So guys, the subtraction there. Uh, just make sure you go through the revision, decimals, subtraction, addition. Because it's something that you need to consider on its own. The universal set has uh, subsets A and B such that the universal set is an element which contains of X, where this X is an integer taken from 1 up to 20. X is greater than or equal to 1, less or equal to 20. Meaning to say this will be 1 up to up to 20, 1 and so on, up to 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, all those integers. A, as the value x is uh, representing the values of x such that uh, this is less than 10, x is less than 10, 1, 2, remember the universal set is from 1 up to 20, that's your universal set. So A is going to be the numbers 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The integers less than ten. So we are up, going to right uh, count the numbers up to up to nine. B talking about the values of x such that this x is a perfect cube. In the universal set, what are the perfect cubes that we are given? Remember the perfect cubes. These are numbers raised to the exponent of 3. 1 to the exponent of 3. 2 to the x, that's cubes. 3 to the exponent of 3. 4 to the exponent of 3. 5 to the exponent of 3. But in within 1 to 20, 1 to the exponent of 3 is 1. So meaning to say we need this. 2 to the exponent of 3. 2 to the power of 3. 2 times 2 times 2. That is going to be 8, which means we need this value. 3 to the power of 3, that's 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 27 is 
above this 20 that we are given. So we, can, we are not going to consider all these perfect cubes from 27 uh, and so on. So the perfect cubes, which satisfies the conditions that we are given also will be one and eight. All right. A list all elements of item one, B, the elements of B already. We listed this. So remember I said we've got one and eight. So these are the elements in uh, B. All right, guys, something like this, okay? So these are the elements that you're gonna consider in B, just one, eight. Then from this part, item two, A, intersection B. So remember the intersection, the elements found in both of the set, both A, you can see the elements there in A, also in B, both. So we have got one, one, the same. This eight, the same eight. So meaning you say you're talking about one, eight, one, eight. That is the intersection. What we can see in B and also eats in A. So that is one and eight. So then the intersection of A and B was going to be one, eight. And as we can see, one, eight represents the set B. So that's why here you're given, yes, or otherwise state the relationship between A and B. We can see that the set B is inside A. One eight, one eight is there in A. As it is, we are not having anything that is remaining. So what type of a set is it? B becomes a subset of A. The elements in B, all the elements in B are found in A. So in this case, our B becomes uh, the subset of A. So it can also be referred as a proper subset of A. Everything that you are considering is in A. So because of the universal set that we are given and some other elements, considering just A and B, it will be B as a subset of what? Of A, okay? That is uh, number, number eight. The number nine we are given express 732 times 10 to the exponent of minus one in standard form. This number is not in standard form. Why? Remember that a number to be in a standard form, it must be of a times 10 to the power of 10, which is, uh, which is fine. But this a is supposed to be between or in within one and 10. A is supposed to be a number greater than one, but less than 10. A is supposed to be less than 10. But this number 730 is bigger than. So you can convert the 732 to standard form. That means we've got 1, 2, 7, 3, 2 times 10 to the power of 2. Remember, that's a significant digit that you started with. But there is a 10 to the power of minus 1 already given. So consider the multiplication of the same basis. Add the exponents. So... If we add the exponents there uh, to the exponent of 2 plus minus 1, plus and minus, that's a minus. So 2 minus 1 will be 1. So that will be 7, 3, 2 times 10 to the exponent of a 1. All this part is considered. The number that we are having is in within the interval, and this exponent or the power is an integer there. So that was our question B. We are given three towns A, B, C, and C are situated along a straight road. But town A, town B, town C, and so on. Such that, such that town C is four times 10 to the power two kilometers from B. Okay? From town A. Sorry for that. This is Town C, is this from town A? C from A, the distance between these two points is the one that you are given of C and A. 4 times 10 to the exponent of 2. 4 times 10 to the power of 2 kilometers. And 
Town B is 1,88 times 10 to the power 2 kilometers from town A. B. B from A. B from A. So the distance that we are given is for this one. B to A. Which is 1,88 times 10 to the power of 2 uh, kilometers. Find the distance of town B from C. So we need this distance of B from C. Give your answer in standard form. In standard this distance. So as you can see, if you add this part of A to B, B to C, it gives you the wall of AC. So in order for us to find B to C, which is the difference there from B to C, it is simply the difference of AC, the wall of AC, 4 times 10 to the power 2 minus this part. If you remove this, you are going to remain with this section. So you simply subtract 1,88 times 10 to the power of 2. If you're someone who is used with uh, working with these numbers in uh, standard form, is fine. If you're used with ordinary form, convert this to ordinary form, 4 times 10 to the power of 2. This is 100 times 4, which is 400 minus 100 times 1,88, which is 188. You subtract, you obtain 212, which is to be converted back to standard form. So in standard form, remember between 1 and 10, so you're going to move the comma. So it's going to be 2, 1, 2 times 10 to the exponent of 2. These whole calculations of everything is in kilometers. That's the difference in standard form. So guys, please revise. Round off this value correct to the nearest 10. So this, uh, like we know, guys, this... Uh, if you're given in terms of the money, you're going to consider uh, the ones, the tens, hundreds, thousands. So we're going to consider the ones, the tens, the 100, and so on. So to the next 10, we consider where this 9 is. The next number is 5, which can change this 9 into a 10. It gives a 1 here, a 10. It gives a 1 here, a 10. That will be like that. So that means we're going to have 1 thousand in this case but you can also consider as one thousand comma zero zero if you are referring to the money you can consider the two decimal places they're not a problem correct to the nearest centimeter all right let's first understand the one over five there as a decimal one over five five into one that is going to be zero comma into ten which is two so that's three and 0, 0,2, which is simply 3,2. This 3 and 1 over 5 is same as 3,2. So you can properly see this. If you are given to the nearest centimeter, you can check. It's just like to the nearest whole number. So you consider, all right, to the nearest whole number, this is my centimeter. So what is affecting the 2? Is it going to change this 3? No. 3 is less than 5. I mean, this 2 is less than 5, so it cannot change the 3. So it will be 3,0 which is same as what? As uh, three centimeters. That is to the nearest whole number. You're, to the nearest, the unit that you are given there. If it was meters, then you are asked to the nearest meter, the meter to the nearest whole number, the unit that you are given there. All right. B item one, you are given express three, uh, 432 as a product of its Prime factors, 432. So you're going to divide uh, the smaller number 2 into 4, that is 2, into 1, into 3, sorry, that is a 1. Then we've got a remainder of 1 into 6, which uh, into 12, which is 6. So that is, uh, you're going to have 216 divided by 2. Uh, 2 here, that's 1. Into 1, that's a 0. Into 16 which is 8, uh, gain by a 2 into a 10, that's a 5, into a uh, 8, that's a 4, by 2 into a 5, that's a 2, remainder a 1 into a 14, that's a 7, 
We cannot use a 2, we're going to use a 3 into a 27, a 9, a 3, a 3, a 3, a 1. So you can actually write this number 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, times, which is fine. Or you can just ask yourself, like 2 is multiplying itself how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is same as 2 to the power of 4 times 3 is multiplying itself how many times? 1, 2, 3. That's 3 times 3, 1, 2, 3. So this is 3 to the power of 3. You can also write your answer this way. As a product of it, these are prime factors. You can also write as 2 times, it's 1 and the same. This is the product of its in index form. So it's still 1 and the same. We are given like that. Yes. Find the smallest number by which 432 must be multiplied to get a result which is a perfect square. Without even calculating or without even evaluating this in simplest form, I can tell that 432 is not a perfect square from this. It is not a perfect square. A perfect square it is supposed to be consisting of e uh, even exponents. 2 to the exponent of 2, 3 to the exponent of 4, 5 to the exponent of 4, 7 to the x. They are supposed to be even exponents on top. The moment that you're given an even exponent on top, throughout, the number becomes a perfect square. 2 to the exponent of 4 times 3, uh, to the exponent of 4. This is a perfect square. 2 to the exponent of 2 times 3 to the exponent of 2. This is a perfect square. 2 to the exponent of 4 times 3. to All these are perfect squares because they are raised to the even numbers. But this one is not because of this exponent of 3. 3 is not an even number. So what can we do? We simply ask ourselves, okay, what can we do to make this three an even number? That is to remember we talk about the, the smallest one. So you just add a one by adding a one to any odd number, it becomes an even number. Okay, any odd number that you are given, just add a one, it becomes an even. Three plus one, four, two plus, uh, I mean three or uh, one plus one, which is a two, five plus one and six, any. You add a 1, it becomes an even. So, but adding a 1, what does it mean? It means it was a multiplication of the 3 to the exponent of 1 like this. You cannot just add a 1. Remember, you can only add if you're multiplying the bases, which are the, which are the same. So it was 3 to the exponent of 3 times 3 to the exponent of 1. That is where we added 3 plus 1. So meaning to say, what is being taken into consideration is not the one that is having there, but the three to the exponent of a one as it is. That is, the, find the smallest number uh, by which this 432 must be multiplied. If you multiply, so the product must be multiplied. When you multiply three to the exponent of one. Yes, it's true that you're going to add the exponents because you're multiplying the bases which, which are the same. But you consider on product. So there it was going to be 3 to the exponent of 1, which is simply a 3. So that is uh, uh, the effect that you are going to have at the end. Alright, on number 11 we are given a green grocer bought 80 oranges for $640. Yeah, 80 oranges. That is, we're going to need cost to price, which is 640. Then sold them at $15 each, which is the selling price. He sold these at $15 each. $15 each. How many oranges? 80. That will be the total. Take note of what you're given. Each is $15, but they're 80. So what is going to be the selling price? $1,200 if you multiply properly. Then the question was find the percentage profit made. 
So in order for you to have the percentage profit, you're supposed to calculate the profit first. From the selling price minus the cost price, which is we sold this at 1,200 minus the cost. What was the cost price in the first place? So this was going to give us uh, 560, uh, $560 as the cost price, I mean, as the profit. But the question is, find the percentage profit made. So the percentage profit made, understanding that the percentage will be profit over the cost price. Times 100%. So simply uh, substituting our values, the profit, uh, in this case, which is the one that we got here. So that is a profit of uh, $560. The cost to price initially, it was 640 times 100%. Uh, so just like that. So you can also reduce your values. Uh, this part is up to you guys, reducing of these values. Uh, you can also reduce by 8, which is 8, 8 into 56, which is a 7. You can also reduce 8 into 10, uh, which is 1. Remainder 2 into 20, that will be 2 into 16. Remainder a 4, that will be into 40,5. Then you multiply 12,5 uh, times 7, that was going to be 87,5 or 87 and a half percent. So from this, we are saying the, the grocer, the green grocer made 87.5% uh, uh, profit uh, from what was there initially. Then B, we are given that a woman invested 4000 so this is the money invested in in a bank at a uh, 3% simple interest take note of the interest that you are working with which is the simple interest so if you are working with the simple interest and you are not given the total amount you can just use your formula that interest is equal to principal times rate times time over 100 if you understand this formula so there we are given, she invested a certain, man or, uh, certain amount of money, which is 4,000. That is the amount invested principal is 4,000. In a bank at this rate, meaning to say we've got our R of 3%, the money and, and it end an interest of $240. That is the interest uh, was obtained as 240 Dollars, then find the time the money was in the bank. So this was a direct formula to use. We are given everything, the interest, which is 240, is equal to the principal, the amount invested, uh, which is 4,000 in this case, All right? Where am I getting this, guys? This is just uh, 4,000 4, here. So that is our principal. We're going to substitute the 4,000 times the rate, 3% over 100, or the 100 is already given on the formula. So that was going to give us the time, and this time is in years. So you can also reduce these zeros here, okay, before you cancel. Uh, that's 240. So you go to 40 times 3, which is uh, 120, 12, there is 0, 120, T, divide by 120, by 120, so T was going to be, what, 2. So like I said, uh, the time is in years. If you are using this formula of the amount, be careful, because we do not have the amount. If you are using this formula for simple interest, we are someone who is used to this formula. Be careful because you do not have the amount. So first, you must obtain this amount from principal and interest, the sum of the principal and interest, which is 4,000 plus 240. Then you can use this formula when you have the amount to calculate error. Remember error 
is supposed to be, uh, I mean, to calculate T, but when substituting this R here, you substitute as R over 100, then you calculate your time in years. So you can actually try that and see you're supposed to have the same answer there. Then uh, number 12, Lena P walks to school every day. So this Lena is going to school every day, which is five kilometers from the Lena's house. So the distance between being uh, five kilometers in order for the Lena to reach the school at 7.15. So 7.15, uh, the time at which lessons commence. So 7.15, this is the, the starting time uh, in this case, in terms of what? In, the, in terms of the classes, which means it's already at, at, the, at, the, at the school. But you're given the time at which lesson, okay, then um, the, the learner leaves home at, this is the 05.45 is the time when the learner leaves home when he's leaving the place. So that was A, write 0545 as a time in 12 hour notation. So remember this is in the morning AM, that is the five, so you can just write as five dot uh, 45 like this AM. So still, it's one and the same uh, concept there. All right, let's consider other part of our question. Then we are given on number B, on one of the days, Lena P arrived at school at 7.25. Find the time by which Lena P was late for the lessons. Remember this, Lena is supposed to arrive 7.45 where the classes commence. But this time, he arrived at 7.25, so you're going to have the difference, 7.25 minus the time commences at what time? It was at 15, uh, uh, 0, 0.7.15. So that's the difference, which is a zero here. One, that's a zero, again, a zero. So that means we are talking about what? Uh, this is the column of minutes. So this learner is 10 minutes late in this case. The, number, uh, the time by which the learner was let find the time by which the learner was led by the class. So it was led by what? Uh, 10 minutes. All right, item two. Calculate the average speed in kilometers per hour at which learner P was walking on the day that the learner was led. All right. So remember the speed, average speed being distance over time. So you're going to consider between we are told that the distance is five kilometers to walk to school. There's a distance of what? Of five kilometers. We have the distance. But if you check, we do not have the time that was taken when the learner was late. Remember, when the learner is late, what is the time that you considered? Yeah, this is what you are given. Take note here. At which P was late walking on the uh, walking on the day that the learner was late, or on this day when he was late, which means we are still on this part. So when he was late, he arrived at uh, 7.25. That is the time that is when he is late. Initially, he was supposed to be at 15. So do not take this uh, 10 here. This one was the difference to see how much, like, uh, the time by which is let, like how many minutes or how many hours is he let? But we, here we need the time that was taken uh, in this case, the total times that is uh, uh, from initially, that is from the time when this uh, Lena P uh, leaves the house because he leaves the home at what? As 0545. So from that 0545, uh, 0545 to the 0725 uh, that we are given when he is late, we need the difference in terms of the time. That will be our time. And this time is supposed to be in what? In hours. 
So the difference, which is our time, we're gonna subtract 0, 07 uh 25 minus 0, 40, uh, 0, 05 45. Okay. 25 minus 45 impossible. So you're gonna borrow an hour here from the the seven hours that we are having. Gonna borrow an hour, that will be 0, 06. Give it here as 60 minutes. So you add 60. 25 plus 60, that will be 85. Now we can subtract 85 minus 45, that's 0, 04. So that's a difference of 40, uh, difference of 1. So remember, these are hours. So this is one hour, and this column is for minutes, one hour, 40 minutes. But the time is supposed to be in hours. So how do you convert this to hours? 40 minutes to hours you divide by 60 remember an hour has got 60 minutes so that's 40 over 60 which is simply by two that is uh, two over three so we have got one and two over three hours it's supposed to be one and 40 over 60 like this okay so we've got one and two over three hours which is simply as an improper fraction it's gonna be multiply three then add two, that's five over three hours in this case, okay? So you're talking about uh, the time, five over three hours. So now let's consider to say the distance traveled is five kilometers. So the speed being distance over time is going to be five kilometers over the time, which is five over three measured in hours. So that means we are going to obtain kilometers per hour speed kilometers per hour all right so remember our division guys we are dividing this is same as uh you're simply dividing uh like this five divided to five over three so remember what i said before you introduce a multiplication so it's gonna be five over one times three or five the moment you introduce multiplication you invert the second fraction so there we are going to obtain uh those three kilometers three kilometers per hour. The speed in kilometers per hour, you must have your distance, kilometers, uh, the time in hours in order for you to have that uh, kilometers per hour concept. All right, so let us consider another question, which is number 13. Number 13, we are given our diagram where we, are, where we have got a P, uh, SR, which is, outer triangle such that uh, Q, T is parallel to RS. These two sides, they are parallel. All right. And there we are given an angle of uh, 30 degrees. So you can actually answer some questions by just being parallel. And also these two sides are equal. So the question it was calculate or to find SQT. All right. That is S. Q, T, this angle that we are having here. Remember, these lines are parallel, so you can consider alternate angles. Alternate angles, the ones that form a Z, and we know that alternate angles are equal. So that is 30 degrees. So if this angle is 30, this angle is also uh, 30 degrees. So then also T, Q, P, all right, T, Q, P. Uh, T, Q, P. Let's see what we have here. That is from T to Q to P, this angle here. Remember, these are parallel lines like from what we're given. So these two angles, they become corresponding angles, the one that gives us an F. All right, F angles, corresponding angles. So these two angles are corresponding. So if this angle is 50, this angle is also uh, 50 degrees. So it means our angle T, Q, P was going to be uh, 50 degrees from what you're given. All right, so that was going to be uh, 50, uh, 50 degrees. There are so many ways that you can actually use, uh, but in this case, the easier part, you can just consider your corresponding angles because you're already given the parallel line concept. Then C. PTQ from P to T to Q, this one. All right. 
remember we are told that these two sides are equal, which is fine. All right, so many ways again that we can consider. This angle here is also the same. This angle here, it corresponds to this uh, angle, just like the part of the corresponding angles that we had before from that concept of our uh, parallel. Remember, said this angle corresponds to this angle. All right. So the question is, how can we find the wall of this angle, which is uh, PSR? This angle here is uh, 8 degrees, the wall of the angle at uh, Q. And from the sides that are equal, the best angles, the angle at S and this angle, which is at P, opposite to this side here at P, they are equal. So from the 80 degrees, the wall of this angle, it will be 180 angles in a triangle minus 80 divided by, by 2. 180 minus 80, that is 100 uh, degrees divided by 2, which is uh, 50 degrees. Uh, 50 degrees. So the 50 degrees in this case that we are having is inside of the triangle. This one inside, not, not combined like this, no. The 50 is this one, this part of S. Like we've got S1, S2. Let's say S1 is 50. So as we need the wall of this angle, because we'll say this angle, which is the wall of angle S and the wall of angle T here, are corresponding angles. So that means we can calculate our angle P, uh, T, Q in that case, which is uh, 30 plus 50. So it's simply 30 plus 50 degrees, which was going to be 80 degrees. So if this is 80, this is also 80, the whole of this angle here. So also you can consider uh, from the 50 that we had calculated, we can consider that uh, here before, besides the corresponding angle concept, you can consider angles in a triangle. If you understand that uh, this angle here is 50 degrees and this angle is uh, 50 degrees. So you can consider also angles that are inside the triangle that they add up to 180 degrees. So when you say the angle at T, is going to be 180 degrees minus the sum of these angles, 50 plus 50 degrees. So many ways that you can answer this question. So it's going to be 180 uh, minus 50 plus 50, which is 100, and that will be 80 degrees. So many ways that you can actually uh, use, attempt this typical question. So that was our angle, uh, PT. Q, which is uh, 80, 80 degrees. All right. Then number 14, we are given two learners, P and Q, arrive. Uh, so we are given two learners, uh, P and Q, the right and mathematics test, which is the probability that P passes the test is three over five. So their P to pass the test is going to be three over five, then to fail, okay, and so on. Then Q and so on to pass uh, is 2 over 3 to pass and to fail. All right, no problem. So if you are given this information and you ask to complete the tree diagram below by inserting the probabilities not given, uh, even if you do not understand the probability diagram concept, like the information there, what you need to understand, like I said on our probability, is every probability that you consider along this branch here, must add up to, to one. Meaning to say, if this is three over five, I'm going to subtract it from one to obtain when this learner fails. So it's one minus three over five. One minus three over five, one is same as five over five. So it's simply five over five minus three over five, which is gonna be two over five. The same thing, this is one over three, we are given a one over three here. So to find this one, just subtract from one because the probability on each branch adds up to one. So one minus one over three. This is two over uh, three over three, I mean, minus one over three, which is going to be two over three. So this is two over three. So we're going to use the same concept throughout this the diagram like that. You must know that the probability of each branch simply, uh, simply adds up to one.
just like that. They simply add up to, to a one. So if you consider this other part here, it was two over three from one, it was gonna be a one over three. From that one, we're gonna have a one over three. So that is it, two over three. Yes, we have completed our diagram. So that is um, the most important part of our, our simplification there. Okay, so this was uh, going to be our diagram. In this case, you just have to uh, consider the concept that uh, the sum uh, of everything, everything that you have on these two branches must add up to one. This must add up to one. This also must add up to, to one. So we have been given uh, on the other part of our question, which is now the probability. Find the probability that only one, take note, only one. So what is the condition about this one? Only one of the learners passes the test. Only one passes the test. So it is a condition whereby we are going to have uh, like this part where one is going to pass and this one fails. Or we are going to have a condition where the first one fails and the second one is going to pass. That is the condition one is supposed to pass. So it cannot be a pass and a pass. It cannot be a fail and a fail. Supposed to be one pass, one fail. So that is the condition, only one. So meaning to say in that condition, we're going to consider the first pass as three over five, you multiply to the fail, which is one over three. So that's we've got a pass and a fail. Then we add to this one of a fail to a pass, a fail, which is two over five, and a pass, which is considered as two over three. All right, so for the best uh, addition, just multiply the numerators, denominators together, since you can see that the denominators are going to be the same, the five and three. So three times one, that is three over five times three, which is 15, plus two times two, which is going to be four, five times three, which is 15. So what you just need is to have the same denominators. That's the concept. So that if these denominators are the same, you simply add the numerators together. So that's three plus four, which is seven over 15. So the total or the resulting that you're going to have at the end uh, for this probability was going to be seven over 15, where one is going to pass. Factorize completely. This is just a direct 4x minus 2i2 is common here. So divide by 2, 4 by 2, that is going to be 2x minus 2 and 2, that is going to be 1y. So this is uh, direct like that. Then the other part, a difference of two squares, 4x squared minus y squared, 4x squared minus y squared. 4 is a perfect square, so you're going to have the two brackets the square root, uh, that is 2x, the square root there, then one is going to subtract, one is going to add the square root of the other part, which is the square root of y squared is y. So you're going to have 2x minus y into 2x plus y, or 2x plus y into that of 2x minus y. Then from there, hence, or otherwise, find the LCM. So hence is simply a continuation from what we are given. So the LCM, remember, you're supposed to consider all the terms. We have got the two. We are going to consider uh, the two outside of the bracket. So meaning to say we are going to consider the two and the two brackets that we are given. Remember, this is the same bracket of 2x minus y, 2x minus y. So we are not going to write this twice. You just write it once, uh, 2x minus y. And there is another bracket there of 2x plus y. Remember, the LCM, you take everything. If it was the HCF, the HCF is the common bracket, which is this one of 2x minus y, the common term. If there is something that is common, but the LCM, you take every term that you are seeing there. The table below contains distance covered in kilometers per given liters of fuel. As the distance is increasing, the number of fuels is increasing also. State 
the type of variation connecting the two quantities, these quantities, as one is increasing, another one is increasing. That is a direct uh, variation that we are given there, connecting these two quantities, D and L. Then we're asked to express this D in terms of L. So that means there's a relationship that happens between D and L. D varies directly to L. But it must be D in terms of L, so D is equal to the constant times L. So you're going to take any possible combination, any combination, you're going to take this one, take this one, you take this one, it's in your hands. So avoiding working with decimals, you can do that. So I uh, assume you're just going to use the second condition where D is 150. At that condition, our D is 150. Uh, at this condition where L is given as what? At this same point, the number of liters will be 10. So it simply means it's, a, it's corresponding. So you just use any part that is corresponding. Calculate uh, the value of K, which is our constant connecting these two, which is going to be 15. So the relationship thereafter is D is equal to the constant, which is 15 uh, times L. So this is the relationship that is to express D in terms of L. So D is equal to uh, 15L. That was uh, two marks for that. Then calculate the amount of fuel in liters required to cover 480 kilometers. So if you consider back, the amount of fuel was already in liters. The fuel is already in kilometers. So this relationship that we are given there is nothing for us to change because this is needed in liters. The distance is given in kilometers. So we're going to take our relationship. Remember, our direct variation or any other type of variation, we are going to have a continuation from this relationship. Our distance is 100, uh, 480. So we are going to substitute the distance that we are given and calculate our L. So that is a uh, distance of 4. 180 is equal to 15 L. So this is a product, just divide uh, by 15. Both sides, you can also try reduce by five and so on by five. This will be three uh, by five into 45. That is nine for the remainder of three, which is six. Three here, that is going to be three. Uh, three into six, which is going to be two. So that means our L at the end was going to be 32 liters, remember? This is supposed to be in uh, liters. So that was two marks for that. Uh, the number of liters containing uh, or pertaining the given information. All right, they were given on number 17. Uh, that is the North Pole, and we are given. And the diagram above on this diagram F, eight kilometers due north of E of the school E. So F is due north, which is on top of E like that. And we are given uh, G five kilometers from E at a bearing of two forty. So this is on a bearing of 240, okay? Then you asked, find the compass bearing of school E from G, that is E from this G, the compass bearing. So remember the compass bearing is supposed to indicate in terms of the North Pole, already I've got a North Pole here, so you just need to know the angle that is taken from the North in the east direction from the north going to east, what is this angle here? Angles at a point, they add up to 360. So remember the concept, angles at a point. So from 360, we subtract 240. That is going to be 120 degrees inside of E here. Why are you calculating this angle? Because there is a relationship between these two angles. These are core interior angles. Remember the parallel lines concept from the north poles. They will never meet. So that means this from 180 degrees, uh, the core interior angles, they add up to 180. That was going to give us uh, 60 degrees at the end. So this is not three-figure bearing. This is compass bearing. If it was three-figure bearing, I was going to write this as 0, 060 degrees. That's a three-figure bearing. But the compass bearing, we're relating from the north going to the, to the east. So it's going to be north angle of 60 degrees to the, to the east here. Uh, side. So that is our compass bearing. All right. So that was our information that you are given.
And with this, you are then asked to calculate the distance that is uh, of school F from G. Leave your answer in said form. F from G. Okay, let's see on our diagram. I want you to see something here. This is where we are having our F. Our F is this point to, to G. So we need this distance that is covered here. And as we can see, the triangle that is formulated is a non-right angle triangle given two sides and an included angle. So this question, it was not enough because we do not have the details, the cost of the angles, the cost of 60, the cost of uh, uh, sine of 60. We do not have those angles. So actually, this was not enough. Okay, This part was not clear enough because uh, we do not have angles. This is paper one, remember? So we do not have any other way uh, to use. We are going to use the cosine rule. You're limited to the cosine rule. You cannot say this is divided into two where you can consider there is nothing like that because these sides are not the same. This is eight. This is five. So it's not an isosceles uh, triangle. So the only part that we had was to use uh, the cosine rule given two sides and an included angle. Remember, our cosine rule A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos of A. So this information was not enough because you are supposed to be given the angles. If you are given 120, just like that question that you are given, those angles, the sine of 15, the tan of 15, it was supposed to be like that. So in this case, you are not given. So it was limited, guys. It's going to have FB, FG squared is equal to B squared plus C squared, which has the size creating the angle that we are given here, which is 5 and 8. So it was going to be 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times B and C, which is 5 times 8 times the cos of 120. So guys, I do not know, like they want you to know the value of cos 120, which is impossible for you guys. But if you do not know, because uh, you're not given that. So just simplify 5 squared, which was going to be 25. 8 squared, 64, minus 2 times 5, which is 10 times 8, which is 80, cos 120 degrees. Like I said, you were supposed to be given the value of cos 60, then you relate it to that one. So since you are not given, just simplify this, add these two. That will be, uh, if we add uh, these two, that will be, all right, that's a 5 here. All right, guys, here is going to be 9. And you add, that will be 80, 89 minus 80, the cost of 120 degrees. So under exam condition, because you do not have these values, you just introduce your square root there. So you're going to have your FG as the square root of that part. But you're supposed to be given uh, these values uh, for the cost of, uh, for the cost of 120 degrees which will be, it will be actually a negative of the cos 60. So when you are given the values, it was supposed to be negative cos 60 degrees, which will give you a plus there, which will be 89 plus 80 cos uh, 60 degrees under the square root. All right. So that means at this stage, guys, we can just simplify to this. We are not, we are not given this. The values that I you can uh, actually work with, uh, I mean the, the other angles and so forth. But in a case that they now want us to understand these values, then you have to know these values, okay? The cost of uh, 60 degrees, which is a half, 0 0.5. So it will be 80 times 0 0.5, half of, whenever you give, oh, I've got this 0 0.5, it's a half. So the moment you multiply this by 0, 0.5, it's going to be a 40. So that will be 89 plus 40, which is 9. And that will be 12. So it will be 129. So meaning to say FG will be equal to the square root of 129 uh, kilometers. So in this case, guys, we just assume they need us to work with our special angles. Remember the concept of your special angles under sets. Uh, I'm going to talk about that because the way that it is right now, it uh, simply means they need us to understand that concept. 
they need us because there is no way you're going to obtain the cost six because you're not given. You see, you're not given that. So it simply means they now need you to work with your special angles, know them by heart also, because you're not going to answer this question. So the special angles, we are talking about angles that we can determine their values uh, direct. So it was going to be square root of 129. We, we can determine these values by, by head. We do not even need a calculator. These are called special angles. If this is one, this is one. This is square root of two. So we've got the tan of 45 there, which is one. We have got uh, the cos of 45 degrees, which is the adjacent of hypotenuse. So it's going to be one over square root of two, which is simply means square root of two over two. We also have the sine of 45, which is the same as the cos of 45. So it will give you square root of two over two. If you consider that one for 60 degrees that you're given, the triangle that you use, it will be like this. So where this is uh, 60 degrees, and this is also 60 degrees, this is 30, this is 30. So they want you now to know this by hand. So this is 2, 2, 1, 1. Using your Pythagoras theorem, that will be the square root of 3, this side. So you can actually work with one side of the triangle like this. So you can know these angles by, I mean, these ratios by hand. There we are given an angle of uh, 60 degrees. Remember, you're given uh, 120. So 120, you relate from 60 degrees, okay? So the sine of 60 degrees opposite, which is square root of three over hypotenuse, which is two. The cos of 60 degrees, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it will be one over two. So as you can see, that's where we are getting that half. The same with tan 60. So that is what I'm saying now. They need you to use these special angles now because the cost 60, you are not given. So the 0, 0,5, the half, you are not given. So there was no way that you're going to simplify this without the special angles. So they want you now to know your special angles by heart. Okay? It is something that we just ignore uh, in our revisions. Now they need you to go through. So revise these special angles uh, in your revisions also. All right, so that was our question there in said form. That is our answer is supposed to be under the square root, under the square root. All right, number 18, find the value of y. The value of y, this is where we have our y. Yes, so you can just check corresponding terms, the six, the three y and the nine. So it means six minus three, y is equal to nine. Those are the corresponding terms. Six, three, y, and so just use the sign that you're given. So for y, so transpose this to the other side becomes a negative minus three, y is equal to nine minus six, which is three. So we're gonna divide by negative three by negative three. So y is equal to what? Minus one. Okay, so that is it. You don't need to solve it. Guys, it's one mark as you can see. You don't need to solve everything. They need you to just take a concept there, just a concept, okay? Just a concept of uh, the subtraction. How do you subtract as if, as you are subtracting, how are you subtracting? All right, evaluate or simplify the product of these two we are given, matrix two, three, multiplying one minus three. So row by column, okay? This is a two by one matrix, two rows, one column. So you're multiplying a two by one to a one row, two columns which is a one by two matrix. So this is what we have. So remember, multiplication here is possible and our answer is supposed to be a two by two matrix. So let's consider row by column, two times one, that is two. Are we going to add anything? No, the row is done, there's nothing. We are done with this row. We move on this row and this is another column. So two times minus three is on its own, minus six. That's another column there. We are done with this row. It multiplied this column. It multiplied this column. You're done. You move on to the next row, the first column. Three and one, that is three. Three and minus three, that is minus three. On minus nine on the other column. That's it. So that is our project then. Given that this matrix that you're given is the inverse of find the value of x. Remember the concept original matrix, which is a two by two matrix. This A is a two by two matrix multiplied to its inverse, we are supposed to obtain identity matrix 
which is 1001, with the original matrix. So they are saying this here is the inverse. So this is our original. This is the inverse. So the product of 9, 2, X, 1, which is the original matrix to its inverse, 1 minus X minus 2, 9, must give us an identity matrix. That is the law, the theorem between an original matrix, which is a two by two matrix to its inverse. You must obtain an identity matrix as the product. So there, there's no need for you to uh, multiply everything row by column, just choose one row, one row and a column. If you take this row and this column, Whatever that you multiply corresponds to one. If you take this row and this column, whatever that you, you take corresponds to zero. So just choose. So in this case, I'm going to take this part. Nine times X. Remember the concept? Nine times one, which is nine. So you're going to have nine plus multiply two, uh, the X and the minus two. That's minus two X. So this row and this column, I have multiplied it. I'm supposed to obtain a one on that part. So remember, it was supposed to be this part you combine. You. So instead of doing that, just form an equation like that, solve it. Plus and minus, that's a minus. So nine minus two X is equal to one. Let's solve for X. Minus two X is equal to transpose nine to the other side becomes a negative one minus nine, which is minus eight divided by negative two by negative two. So at the end, our X was going to be a four. So we are given uh, that X will be a four for this matrix to be an inverse of that other matrix. The product of the two must be equal to the identity matrix, which is one zero zero one that one. Write the value of one in the value six one zero seven. So this is like, what is like, what is the value correspond? Remember if you are given like, uh, 1,584, like we've got the, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, thousands, and so on. So this, this is because you are in the best of 10. So in the best of uh, seven, you're going to have what we call the ones, the sevens, uh, the fortnights. You'll be working with the power of uh, the power of the best, just like here, 10 to the power of one, 10 uh, to the power of zero, I mean, to the power of one the power of two to the power of three. So 10 to the power, which is one, 10, 100, 1,000. So this ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So in the best of seven, it would be to the power of zero, to the power of one, to the power of two. That's how you call these numbers. So to the power of one, uh, zero, it's one, seven, 49, and so on. So you've got ones, sevens, 49s, and so on and so on. So the value, of the the one there is the sevens it is representing what uh the sevens in this case so you can just say one sevens okay just like you are given this eight it's eight tens which is 80 eight tens so it's one sevens which is simply a seven that means we're talking about one seven which is a a seven we, are we getting the sense like that part that we are used to in our normal numbers, the value of eight in uh, the value of five in this value, this is 50. Like we've got ones, tens, so there are five tens. So it's one sevens, which is a seven in the best of seven. If it was in the best of six, you relate in the best of six to the power of zero, to the power of one, power of two, power of three. So we've got ones, six, 36, and so on and so on. So that is the language of the best of seven. The language of a best is considered that way. All right. Evaluate this, giving the answer in the best of nine. One, zero, one, six in the best of nine plus eight, eight, one in the best of nine. So let's add six and one. That's a seven. It's less than the best. We can just write our number, seven. One and eight, that is nine. It is equal to the best. Remember, if the number is equal to the best, you divide by the best. So the nine is the best. So nine into nine, that is one remainder, zero. The remainder on our answer, this one, we carry to the next term. Add one plus zero plus eight. That's again nine over nine. A remainder, we give a one. 
1 plus 1, that is a 2. So you're going to obtain 2007 in best of 9. Okay? That is uh, in the best of 9. Then evaluate this, giving the answer in the best of 2. These numbers, they are in the best of 5. 1, 4, 0, best 5, minus 1, 2, 3, in the best of 5. You can just subtract in the best of 5. 0 minus 3, that is impossible. Remember, you add the best here. 5 plus 0, that's a 5. You give a 1, that will be a 3. All right. 5 minus 3, that is 2 in the best of 5. 4 minus 3, which is 1. 1 minus 1, that's a 0 there. So I've got 1, 2. 1, 2 in the best of 5. 1, 2 in the best of 5. But the answer is needed in the best of 2. So how do you convert 1, 2 to best 2? So remember, you're supposed to convert to best 10 first. Uh, 5 to the power of 0 to the power of 1. 1 times 5 to the power of 1 plus 2 times 5 to the power of 0. That will be 5 plus, that's 1 times 2, which is 2. So that was going to be 7 in a base of 10. How do you convert a number from base 10 to base 2? You divide by that base, noting the remainders throughout. 2 in 7, 3 remainder 1. 2 in 3, that will be 1 remainder 1. 2 in 1, 0 remainder 1. So we've got uh, from the bottom going up, our answer is going to be 1. 1, 1, 1, like that. So it's going to be 1, 1, uh, 1, like that, in the best of what? In the best of 2. So follow the instruction. Instruction is in the best of what? In the best of 2. So your answer must be in the best of 2. Number 20, we are given, this is a distance time graph. Distance from home in kilometers. Then you are also given the time travel in hours. So thus, these are the hours. This is the distance as you are going up. One, two, three, up to five, up to six. And at the point six, the person rests for this time, then travels back again. So from this side, going up here, then the way that he was moving, it is covered up to the end point, which is the six kilometers. So he traveled the first six kilometers and the other six kilometers going uh, home, going back home. All right, so the men uh, here, we are given that he went for a walk. He left home at 9.30 a.m. His displacement time graph is given above, which is the distance time graph. Find them. A, the time he arrived back home. The time he arrived back home. If he covered how many hours? From zero to four hours. This is the time taken in hours. One, two, three, up to four hours. But he left home 9.30 a.m. So he's simply going to add. 0930, we add the four hours that we are given. So it's simply 400 or just four like that. This is just a zero, zero, which is 13. Uh, 13, 3, 1, that will be 13, 30 hours. Or you can write it in uh, 12 hour, which is 1.30 p.m. If you wanted to have it that way, or oh, just it this way. So that was guys, just like that. The time is already given on the diagram, time taken for the whole journey. But you have to add it to the time that he left uh, home, that was the condition. Then you are also given the total distance he walked. The total distance he walked. So according to this graph, he when he walked, he went uh, to this place where he rested for some time. Uh, he walked, as you can see, the first three kilometers. He, the, the other two, which is five. Other one, which is six. So going up, you take to the last point there, which is he covered six kilometers. Then going down, he also, I mean, going back home, he covered six. So it's six plus six, which is 12 kilometers. So this is uh, going to be 12 kilometers. Okay. Then the average speed, remember average speed is simply distance over the time taken. So the distance is already given. We saw it from our diagram. What about the total time? According to to our graph, the total time is given here at the end, which is four hours. It took four hours for everything, so that's over four, which was gonna give us three kilometers per hour. Remember speed, kilometers per hour. Then D, the amount of time uh, the man rested. So as you can see, the man rested at this point here. There's no movement here. Uh, this section, he rested. So how many hours? Oh, that is the time. So two boxes represent one hour. And these are two boxes. So he rested for, for one hour in this case, 30 minutes plus 30 minutes, 
which is an hour each box. So meaning to say we are talking of an hour uh, time he rested where there is no movement. That is where he rested. All right, evaluate these two to the exponent of three plus. We do not have a law. Just simplify this separately. Two to the power of three. That is two times two times two, which is eight. Plus two times two, which is four. Then you add that was going to be 12. All right, so this is straightforward. All right, then let's consider the other part. Uh, negative 7x squared. All right, it's negative 7x squared to the power of 0 like this. So remember, any number to the power of 0 is a 1. So negative times 1 will give us negative 1 at the end. So the answer there was going to be negative 1. 2 to the exponent of 3 raised again to another exponent. Remember, x to the exponent of a, b concept. We're going to multiply the 2. So that's 2 to the exponent of 3 times minus 2 over 3. Check this. Uh, 3 and 3. That is going to be 2 to the exponent of negative 2. How do you get rid of a negative? Remember, a negative exponent, a negative exponent simply means 1 over. So this is 1 over 2 to the exponent of 2, which is simply 1 over 1 over 4. So that is our simplification. Uh, thereafter, just have to be careful the question, how it is given uh, like that. Solve for x from this equation. Solve this equation. Solve for x. The best is that the sum 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 2x is equal to 27. If the bases are the same, you're multiplying. Remember, you can add the powers. So it's 3 to the power of uh, 3x. This is just 1. Uh, so it's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3x is equal to 27 in the best of three, that is three to the power of three. Remember that if the bases are the same, the powers will be equal. So three X is equal to three, just divide by three, here it's a product. So X was gonna be a one. So if you divide this here, all right, sorry for that. X was going to be equal to a one. So this is the value of X, which satisfies our equation. Number 22, given this diagram, we have got um, Okay, angle A, where we are given that these two are equal E, A, C, and D, uh, B, D, C. B, D, C, these two angles here, they are equal. So, and also are given the area, this and that. All right, no problem. Let's check our information. From this, name the triangle, which is similar to triangle A, C, E. Triangle A, C, E. So, you need to concentrate on triangle A, C, E. Okay? This is A to C to E, the bigger triangle. Remember, similar figures are said to be equiangular. You are to refer this as equiangular. You take them according to equal angles. Angle A is equal to angle D, but as you take angle, this triangle A, B, C, that uh, the whole triangle that you are given, we can see that C is the common point, this one. It is the common point for the smaller triangle and the bigger triangle. So there's no way that in a triangle, two angles are same, are equal. And the third angles, they are different. There's no way. If these two angles are, are the same, this angle at A and the angle at C, which is the common angle of the two triangles, definitely the remaining angle, which is angle E, must be equal to the remaining angle of this triangle that is inside. So taking these according to equal angles, triangle ACE is similar to triangle angle A, which is this angle is equal to angle D. Okay, we move on to angle C. Angle C is the common angle, so it's going to remain as it is. We move on to angle E. Remember I said angle E and angle B, the remaining angles will be equal automatically. So this angle, uh, triangle that we want is triangle D, uh, C, B. So the answer was going to be triangle D, C, B. You take them according to the equal angles. Then find X from that information that you're given. Find the value of X. Remember that from similar figures, the ratio of sides is the same. So to find X, you can consider the ratio of side A, C over D, C is equal to C, E over the corresponding side C, B is equal to A to E 
over the corresponding side uh, D to B. Okay, what are we given? Are we having AC? AC is the combination where X is, which is X and the three. So you can also take as it is the, the AC as it is. You can take it as X plus three if you want. Okay, that is the AC, the whole of it, over DC, which is from D to C, uh, that is four, is equal to CA from C to E, the wall of this, you add two plus four, which is gonna be six over CB, which is three. So if you consider this ratio here uh, of these six over three here, this one, it's a complete ratio. It shows us the relationship between the similar figures, ACE and DCB. There is a ratio there that you can actually reduce three into three, one, two, which is two S to one. That is the ratio between the sides of these two similar figures, two S to one. But as we need to find X, we can actually solve X plus three over four uh, from this part. We're gonna divide by four, uh, equate to two over one or that six. So then cross multiply. So many say that will be X plus three is equal to two and four, which is eight. So let us find our X at the end. Okay, so in this case, if you had to transpose the three to the other side, that was going to be a minus three. And our X there was going to be five. All right. That is uh, five centimeters. Or you can just combine the AC as it is. You calculate it. You get eight centimeters. Then you subtract eight minus three, which will give you five centimeters at the end. So you're given the concept of the similar figures that the ratio of sides is the same. So that means our X in this case was going to be uh, five centimeters. So that was the consideration. You can calculate from any angle of your option. The way that you understand, like I said, you could have uh, calculated with the whole part of the AC that you are given, or you can work with the X considered as part of your equation. Okay, the formulation of the equations, guys, are actually in your hands. All right, so let's just find. So this is... Uh, the quadrilateral that we want, which is A to B to D to E, which is this quadrilateral here. So remember, these two triangles are similar. They are similar. These two triangles that we are given, the, the bigger triangle and uh, the smaller triangle. Let me just put it this way. And when you calculate it here, there's a part when I talked about the ratio, this one, I do not want to remove this here. Just want to take this part. Remember when I talked about the ratio, this one, and I was explaining this of the two over two over one. This is the ratio of sides from the bigger triangle ACE, which we are given its area. But this is the ratio of sides. They were given ratio of area. So you square this ratio of sides, which is going to be four as to one. That becomes area factor, which is the ratio of areas. What does it mean? It means four from triangle ACE, the bigger triangle ACE, four corresponds with the area because this is area factor. It corresponds to the area of 24 square centimeter. What about one? It corresponds to how many square centimeters in terms of the area. So you work with the scale factor. You find area factor from there. The scale factor is the ratio of sides. The ratio of sides. So you square that to obtain the area factor, which is simply uh, the scale factor squared. So the area factor now is the one that you use in your calculation. So as you can see, guys, it's going to be 1 over 4 times, times 24, which is 6 square centimeters. So the smaller triangle, which is DCB, it has got 6 square centimeters the bigger triangle ace it has an area of 24 square centimeters so therefore what is the area of this quadrilateral if the bigger triangle ac this bigger triangle has got 24 the smaller triangle has got six it is going to be the difference between the two the bigger triangle a c e the bigger triangle which is what 24 minus 
uh, the smaller triangle that is inside, it gives us the difference that is of 18. So that was going to be 18 uh, square centimeters, which is this. So 18 square centimeters and the smaller one of six, if you add together these two, they must give us 24 for the whole uh, triangle, the bigger triangle there. So that was the concept, guys. That was the concept. So this was going to be 18 uh, square centimeters if you subtract at the end. All right. Then we are given another part, which is uh, question number 23. 11-sided polygon has got nine of its exterior angles, each X uh, and two are y each y degrees so it's just like uh, okay there's something like this guys it's gonna be 11 sided and so on and so on and so on so let's just say i want you to note the relationship of exterior angles this is x this is x this is x and so on all right then we're gonna have two angles of y there just just maybe another y like this there are so many x another x another x there are nine of them so we are given these exterior angles and we know that the sum of exterior angles of any polygon that you can talk of, the exam is equal to 360 degrees. Exterior, not interior. Remember, the sum of the interior angles, you have to work with that formula n minus 2 times 180 if there's a need for calculating the sum. But they were given a relationship of the exterior angles. Okay? Nine of its exterior angles, each x. So nine, each is x. And two of which each is y2, of which each is y like this. These two, they must, I mean, these uh, nine exterior angles and these two exterior angles combined together, there are 11. They must add up to 360, the sum of exterior angles. Supposed to add up to 360. All right. Then let's move on to another statement. The sum of nine, now it's interior, interior. Okay, these are not interior angles, so do not confuse with this. These are exterior. So what is the relationship? We need the relationship now between this exterior and the interior because they are talking about the interior. So we need the relationship of that interior angles from the exterior angle. What is the relationship? They are adjacent to X. Remember these two angles, they add up to 180 on a straight line. So the exterior, if it is X, the interior is going to be 180 minus X. 180 minus, remember they are the same, 180 minus X. On those two of Y here, they're going to be written in terms of Y. Those ones, they'll be the same thing again. 180 minus Y, 180 minus Y. So the interior angles, they are written in terms of 180 minus Y, 180 minus X. So remember, there are nine written in terms of x. There are nine of them in terms of x, which is 180 minus x, 180 minus x, 188. So the, the question here is that the sum of these nine, if they are nine, guys, the sum is like this. If you're adding x plus x plus x nine times, that is nine times x. That is why I simply multiply there. You're adding nine plus, you're adding x plus x plus nine times. It's nine x. Y plus y two times two y. So if there are nine and each is 180 minus X, it means it's going to be nine times 180 minus X. Okay, so they're saying this sum that we are given, okay, of this uh, X adjacent one is 1,152 degrees more than the sum of, more than, so meaning to say, if we subtract these two that we are given the, the, in terms of Y, if we subtract these two, these two, if we subtract them from these nine, the difference is of 1,500. It is more than, more than this. So meaning to say the difference is that. Okay, you share uh, two friends, they share suites. The other one get X. The other one gets why. Then you are given the difference between these two, like this x here. The, the value of x, like the, the share of x that we, is more than this y here, five is, is five more. It means x minus y is supposed to give us five. 
or x is equal to 5 plus y because it's more than. So you could have written this as this 9 into 180 minus x is equal. Since they are saying it's 1,500 more than we add to that, which is more than we add to 2 of what? We add to 2 into 180 minus y like this. It was supposed to be either way. Or you simply know that when they say more than, take that from another one. That is the difference. The more, the more than is the difference, is this one, the difference, which is the difference of this is that more. That is, that's it. So the question was for us to form two simultaneous equations using this given information above. So the first one, that says, that's an, an equation there. This is the second one. So you can reduce the second one by nine. Let's simplify further. Nine times 180. That was going to be 1,620. My, nine times minus x minus nine x minus three sixty minus two times minus that will be plus two y is equal to one one five two minus nine x plus two y. If you combine these two, one thousand six and this, you subtract three sixty. You are going to obtain one two six zero. So you subtract it here. One two six zero. That was going to be minus 108. You can divide by, neg avoid to work with the negative. You can also divide by this negative. That will be 9x, divide by negative here. Negative 2y, divide by negative here. That will be 108. Uh, or you can write with the negative 9y. It's up to you. So these are the two equations that you are going to have uh, in simplified form. This will be our second equation. All right. So this is how you form your equation. So answer there. You're going to check this one. And this one, which is simplified. All right. So after forming these equations, the question was B, solve the simultaneous equation. So as we can see, uh, there we can simply use elimination method. 9x plus 2y is equal to this. The other one, 9x minus 2y is equal to 108. So if you want to eliminate x, you subtract. That's positive here. So to eliminate x, subtract second equation from the first one. 9 minus 9, that's a 0. 2 minus minus, that's a plus. 2 plus 2, which is 4y is equal to 360, minus 108. And that's 252. 252 divided by 4, divided by 4. So 252 divided by 4 is going to be 63. So that was going to give you 63 degrees. Then after that, you can substitute this or you can eliminate y again. This because it's the same as you can see, the part of y there is the same. So you can also eliminate the part of y. This is minus minus. So to eliminate, you can add this time 9 plus 9, that is 18x. If you add this, that becomes a 0. 2 plus minus 2, that's 2 minus 2, which is a 0. So you add 360 plus 108 which was going to be 4, 6, 8, divide by 18 by 18. So using elimination method is best when you want to prove that this is correct because you work the x from a, 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 an unknown condition, y from an unknown condition. You, you substitute to prove one of these conditions. Remember, they told us that the sum of this must be 360. So you can just substitute when x is uh, 26. Y, remember, it is 63. So if you multiply this and add, you're going to obtain 360. That is to show you that uh, uh, this is the right part. Okay, so guys, be very careful. Yeah, this question it was going to take all your marks because if you lose these three. Remember, this is paper one correct answer only. You lose these three. Uh, that means the three marks are already gone. The other three marks, it was a tempting question. This one, I just hope we did uh, the right thing. But actually, it was a tempting question. All right, it was a tempting question. Let's work with more. So now, as you can check this question, they want you to understand the topic, the concept of topics, not just one topic, not just a single, the concept of the whole topic and other relationships that you are given from one topic to another. That's what they want you to do. A straight line L is given that it passes through the point 2 minus 3. So there... We are given the point and the gradient 
And here is a gradient of three. So M is the gradient. Uh, find the equation in this format. Remember the format of Y is equal to MX plus C. M is the gradient. So we are already given three, which is our gradient. So that's three X plus C. Find C by substituting the point. Remember the point represents X, Y, where Y is minus three when X is a two, like this. So minus three is equal to three times two, which is six plus C. Take this to that side, that's a minus, minus three, minus six, that's minus nine is equal to C. So therefore, our equation in this format is gonna be Y is equal to MX, which is three X plus a C plus minus nine, that's a minus nine. So Y is equal to three X, Minus nine. When given a point and a gradient, it's enough to calculate the equation. State the relationship between this line L and the line whose equation is this. What is the relationship between our line L, this one, and this one? As we can see, the gradient here is three. We can see the gradient of L is three. On this other line also, why is the subject? So this three is the gradient. The gradient here is three, the gradient here is three. What is it about these two lines? They have got the same gradient. If they have got the same gradient, it means they are parallel. Remember parallel lines, they have got same gradient. If they are perpendicular, the product of their gradients is gonna be negative one. But these ones, they are parallel, same gradient. They have got same gradient. All right, given that f of x is equal to this uh, part that you're given, which is two, K, uh, we are given, that's our f of x, which is equal to 2x plus k squared. And f of 2 is 29. f of 2, it means where there is x, we are going to substitute 2. So in place of x here, yeah, 2 into 2 plus k squared, they are saying it is equal to 29. It is equal to 29. In place of x, sub, that, that is it. Find two possible values of k. As you can see by the statement here of f of 2, this one, the statement that f of 2 is equal to 29, we have formed an equation from this statement. We have formed an equation, and we must solve that equation. So let's solve. That will be 4 plus k squared is equal to 29. Transpose this to the other side. That becomes a minus. It was a positive there. So k squared is equal to 25. Introduce the square root to remove uh, the square. So k, the square root of any number, plus or minus. So that's plus or minus 5. That's why they're saying two possible values. They know that our k uh, from the square root is going to be a plus or a minus. Okay, guys, this was our June exam. June 2024, paper 1. So we are going to work with our paper two uh, very soon. The paper that I got is actually not satisfying, guys. If you have got a clear question, can you do like this one, like this? This is a clear question paper. I can do it anytime, anytime, anytime. I don't even care. But the first one that you have, the paper two, guys, is so ugly. But if there is no other paper that is there, I'm just going to work on it uh, recently. Uh, I mean, very soon. Um, just waiting for us to have a clear question paper for paper two. Then we can uh, work on it. You know my number, guys, my contact. Uh, if you have a clear question paper for paper two, then clearly, uh, just send it. Uh, plus two seven six one eight six four four zero four three. All right, send a question paper uh, to this contact. That is for paper two. I mean, for the paper two, which was written in uh, June, the clear, clear, clear one. You just do like this, guys, very clear. It's going to be easier even on the presentation so that you see what's happening. But anyways, guys, all the best for those who are writing in uh, November. For those who have written in June, now you can even see, guys, paper one, paper two, you can see that you have done well or not. If you know that this, you can see that. Start doing classes now. Don't wait for, for results to come. Start revising now. Don't wait for results. By the time you are waiting for those results, you, a lot of information is getting out. And the result, by the time the results are there, you are starting again. You are starting. Tanga kuti wanu, tanga kuti wanu, tanga kuti wanu. So ngati avoid days, This is the right time.
to start again if you feel it is a ramp is tanga zvekare don't go ahead you know prepare now do not wait for my results my results but i know we to start again ndopo ono zopesira wa kunyora mets five times six times it's because of that tendency so tricky iripo ndi pa ono nyora mazama pa do not wait ukango feel out there is something don't wait on that subject continue to do my revisions on that panozo kuda my results even if waita you or a d or a what it's easier for you to continue because already watogara uri mu revision uri mu mood ye revision Anu panoze ya mari za otu wakutanga kuti wanu. Unotanga from standard form, I'm telling you. You start scratch one and from there, auna time. So, ongo ochiza, zino kuda zrese, unotanga kutu wanu. So, let's avoid that. This is the right time for revisions. Let's work as much revisions as we can. More question papers, more topics. Go through the introductions of each topic. It's not about just a question paper. Do you know the concept of the topic? Don't you mention to Kwanza? Kati revise my concept. And we see such knows the bearing chi. She knows the solving triangle chi. So on this contact, let's send questions, um, topics that we see are uh, not yet done or covered, or even on the comment section. Most of us, we are there on WhatsApp, there on WhatsApp each and every time. There on YouTube, the comment section is there for us also. The comment section is there for us. Do basari comment section. Gati nyore mu comment section. Zubi kan. Kwa sapu kuu ya kune nengi zuna zuchida ku kushandiru. Wa zatuna zunu zaneta. Kwete zotu kwa sakuta ora na azu. Zatu kwa sakuta ora na kuno ku YouTube. Ndoku ndoku basa kwa chokuno. Saka zaneta. Kazi kandu kuno ku YouTube. Comment section do basara ayo. Nyora mu comment section. Chaoru kuda kuti ichi. Andisu pan sa pakati pakati pakati. Question paper rakati rakati rakati. Vekta re gorra kati kana uti question paper rose re gorra kati. Tosha ndra question paper rose. Do basa re comment section. So, I wish you the best. Let's continue revising as much questions as we can. We do not have time. November is around the corner.